For the final week of this season, I wanted to go out with a bang and play one of the best RPGs I've ever played, Bravely Default. Now this game I happened to find working at a call center when I worked for Nintendo. They didn't allow us to look at YouTube videos or anything like that, but they had videos on their website and we were able to look at those. I saw video after video for this game and I knew I had to have it. And when I first got it, I couldn't put it down. I was possessed and it took me a year and a half to go after one of the most anticipated Let's Plays of my life. And I think it's the best Let's Play I've made to date. I poured my soul into that. But how much right did Bravely Default do? Let's check it out. Here's Bravely Default. Well, development of Bravely Default started on the DS, a follow-up to the video game Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light in 2009. This game was going to be part of the Final Fantasy series. Producer Tomoya Asamo wanted to make something new, as they did. In drawing inspiration from Final Fantasy III's job system and the graphics on the DS for Final Fantasy III, the Bravely Default team made a new game on the DS called Bravely Default The Flying Fairy. Wanting to release this game to the world, the team sent it over to America and had the voice acting English translation made for the game. They wanted to make the game's title have Flying Fairy to have the game's title show Airy Lies after Chapter 4. The game was released to the rest of the world on February 7th, 2014, under the name Bravely Default the Flying Fairy. The story begins with a flying fairy flying around, saying, Stay with her to the very end. I do what I want, you Navi looking mo- Whoa, 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 chill, chill. This is a family show. Oh yeah, sorry. After we cut to what looks like a mage trying to pray to a giant crystal, she prays but somehow the crystals are consumed by darkness, causing utter chaos. Anya Jobliz, the vessel of the wind, escapes the chaos. However, cutting to a village of Norende, a young shepherd named Tiz escapes, however his brother is not so lucky and falls to the ascending abyss below. After the world collapses, we cut to another character, a ladies man named Ringapel, reading a strange journal about a young lady who feels he is destined to find. Going on to the next scene, we find a very independent woman named Adia, desperately trying to impress her father, and going on her first mission to take down the town and the inhabitants. Diz wakes up in a nearby hotel where the gameplay begins. Diz heads up to a nearby cave and finds Anya's, where the duo head out on adventure, and they get stopped by these two bozos. They defeat them, and then the team heads back to the hotel where they meet Ringabel. He then joins the party. The team heads to a fortress to the north where they team up with Adia, where she finds out that her father may not be the coolest guy this side of the pillow. The gang is destined for adventure and heads to the desert to awaken the first crystal and save the inhabitants of a water shortage. Then they head to the Florum region where they awaken the water crystal. They head to a fire temple where they awaken the third crystal. They head to Adia's hometown where they do find the king's agendas may not be the best things to go by. They go ahead and fight the king, Adia's father, and fend off the royal duchy, and head out to the holy pillar of light. Fending out the dark knight, Alternus, they see a familiar face that looks just like Ringabel. The ritual started by Aerie is completed, and they are surrounded by light, where the party blacks out. The party is back at the hotel where the game began, basically to start it over. Not gonna lie, this is where the plot kind of loses me, and I really don't like how they handle it at this point. In the next chapters, all the gang does is awakens the crystal 16 more times. Oh, aye, aye, aye. After that, depending on the player's actions, it is revealed that Aerie was working for the darkness the whole time. The gang defeats her and heads to the final dungeon, where they take on the final boss, where they take on the darkness. The game ends where all the world saved, and the credits roll. The story is really good, well, for the first half anyway. Here's the thing, I want to love this story fully, which, for the most part, I really do. I think it's an incredible story. But there is a certain point where the story just kind of dies here. Like, once you get through the Pillar of Light and the first half ends, the story takes a stupid turn where you just repeat over and over what you did in the past. I don't know, man. I just feel like there could have been more done with the story. But I like the twist it has. And not many RPGs can say they had this many twists like this, but that can only hold a story so much. I don't know, the story's kind of a mixed bag of sorts. There are a lot of great things in it, but there are a lot of stupid decisions about it. Story-wise for the first four acts, the story is really, really good. But then it just shuts down and so annoying, man. All you do is repeat the same thing over and over after that. All you have to do is get the four crystals, still do a couple of side quests, and then you head off and go fight the final boss. It's boring. I don't like that they did that to the story. 
You just put an insanely good plot together only to have it come to a screeching halt. Not my cup of tea, didn't really like it that much. It's okay at best, except for the first half. I really enjoyed the first half of Bravely Default. Well, gameplay wise, this game has some of the best gameplay in RPGs. So let's first off get the elephant out of the room, the battle system. You can see here at the top of the screen, you have BP, which goes up more and more as you gain crystals in the first four chapters, which gives you the ability to build up brave points. To gain more brave points, you defend with each party member that builds it up. Then you can use those brave points to abolish your enemy so freaking quick, and I love that. The battle system also adds an auto battle and speed up system, which can make grinding a major breeze. Which, let me tell you, I grinded to heck and back of these characters. I went up to level 99 for every party member and maxed out every job. Speaking of jobs, this game has a job system, and I will tell you, it goes from boring to super awesome, like for real. You're gonna have these super combinations that are so OP and are super exciting to boot. For example, I can use this job combined with the jump ability and the final boss can't even touch me. It is amazing how you can also do things like convert your HP back on an enemy to gain it back, then also do damage to it. You gain jobs by doing side quests and side stories, which can be accomplished by doing tasks in the game. Then you gain those abilities by taking care of that. Then you gain the abilities and jobs by fulfilling and taking care of people in a specific area. For example, one of the first quests is to stop merchants from stealing water from a town and stopping corruption from the government. Huh, I think I've seen this before. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. Not only can you give your party members different jobs, but you can give them secondary jobs, which can give you possible combinations which can make you overpowered beasts like I said before. And grinding to get this OP is so easy. You can essentially also pause the game, change it to difficulty, and jack up the encounter rates. And man, I love this idea. If you're in a tight pinch and need to live, and you're on low health, you can also turn off the rates completely, which is freaking dope. I just played the story and everything on normal mode, but when it came to grinding, I was on easy mode. Literally, doing this method made bosses an entire joke, which is freaking dope. Graphically speaking, I think this game looks wonderful. I love the graphics in this game. Everything looks ultra realistic, and the CGI cutscenes are stunning as all get up, especially for being on a 3DS. The character models may have something to be desired, but I can't deny that everything else looks awesome. The towns and castles, in some cases, they gave a watercolor painting to them as to what environments you're going into look like. And I love this as a person that defs appreciates art. This is awesome. These works of art are true masterpieces. Musically, this game is so good. Most games cannot even touch the quality of sound in this game. The battle theme is so freaking good and the boss battle themes are sweet. Final battle theme is one of the best final battle themes I've heard in any RPG, which I cannot show because due to copyright, but it's freaking good. Just take my word for it. Bravely Default is just an awesome game to play and I love this game so much. Well, Bravely Default Exception probably is the story. I know that there are better stories out there, but truly and impressively, this is how you make an RPG. I don't know if they were just trying to be safe mode with the story just to help people get involved, but to me, really this game shines with the gameplay. And you can't really say that about most RPGs is a lot of it is just point and click, point and click, point and click. But if you look at something like, I don't know, Final Fantasy VI or even Final Fantasy IV, I just feel like those games have more to offer as more of a story to tell. Heck, even a game as obscure as like Xenogears, I think has a better story. Or heck, even the Xenoblade Chronicles. Bravely Default was a good starting point to what I think is a really, really good RPG series. But the stories, even still, in my opinion, haven't really evolved that much. But I do like the characters in this game. The characters are so good. I even like the old guy that says that Anya is pleasantly jiggly. It's like, dude, she's 16, you perv. But uh, it's a wonderful game. I just think a lot of the problems and issues I have with it are definitely because of the story. Like if you put in context something like Final Fantasy VI, I just think the story's better there. I mean, a lot of RPGs have better stories. Heck, I would even say something like Final Fantasy 2 II and Final Fantasy 3 have better stories. And even something as obscure as Xenoblade Chronicles has a better plot. Sure, they have their holes because they're sticking 